All right, so here we are, another amazing All Access. I got two amazing guests today, Matthew Marcheson and Dominic Lewis. Matt, Dom, how are you guys doing? We're great. Very good. <laughs> I'm yeah. doing well. Yeah. We're waiting oh, for the other one to speak. Yeah. <laughs> Who's more polite? Oh yeah, that's no, good. Good. good to see. Good to see you, Kaya. Good to see you, bud. Good to see you. Good to see you guys. Um, so, for anyone watching, uh, Dom and I have sat down multiple times. So Matt and I have. You can go back and watch those interviews. Learn all about them separately. But today, it's about you two together. You two, and then you guys just uh, you have a new film coming out, The King's Man, um, directed by Mr. Matthew Vaughn, the third uh, in the series of the Kingsman series that you guys co-composed. But before we get into that, um, tell us about how this happened how because you guys are actually friends in real life uh which is you know it's not just being forced to work together um so talk about how what was the first meeting between matt and don what are your memories of first meeting each other Whoever oh well I, oh you mean all the way back there all the way back Ooh. yeah Shit, i don't know <laughs> <laughs> don't even remember um you were in you were in the in the what did, did we call that building at remote the dorm room or something like something to that effect the dorm the room. Dorm i tree. think henry nicknamed it the cack pit or something <clears throat> it, it was... sounds sounds about right <laughs> no um... yeah i think at the time at the time i think both both dom and i were kind of starting our careers out um mm -hmm. dabbling with additional writing for people who had already had kind of established careers and we both got linked up with henry jackman so for a, a, a good slug of slog of movies we we kind of were in the wings being addition like being henry's kind of co-lieutenants and helping him get across the finish line when necessary is that is that fair to say yeah i think so i've we probably met before that but <clears throat> the friendship was <clears throat> kindled in uh in the wings of of, of jackman scores yeah, yeah. I, yeah. And for 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 multiple films we were kind of like uh, you know, when the time's right and the movie's right, we should. We start. We started both getting our own our own projects. You know, eventually, and and eventually, it was like, oh, you know, we worked together, we bantered together. It's like we should do something something together at some point when the kind of stars align and it's the the right fit and the right project. And um, it almost happened a couple times, and and mm -hmm. and never kind of came to fruition. And then um, because of this, that, and the other circumstance. Uh, Kingsman, the Venn diagram kind of solidified, and Kingsman was the one, a, a King's man was the one to kind of throw us both in the trenches together. Absolutely. So, I mean, yeah, you, you guys have a you know story history with Henry, and you both have co-composed with Henry and worked under him as an additional composer. Uh, and just talk about those early years of, of being at Remote Control and early in your career. Was it was it great to have a friend that kind of you were able to bond and kind of get through that stuff together. I'm sure it was like you know, long hours and grinding and everything to get to where you guys are now. So was it, were, were there a lot of a uh, heart to heart bonding moments in the middle of the night? <laughs> oh yeah. And past the middle of the night into the wee <laughs> small hours, not going to bed. Yeah. The amount <clears> of conversations <throat> we had in the remote control kitchen at like 3 AM with making a new coffee pot or whatever it is. Yeah. Or finishing another bottle of something. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, yeah, no, it's it, that's sort of when you kind of progress to to doing your own stuff, um, and not being at remote anymore. For me personally, that's that's the real thing you miss. Like, I really miss Matt popping in and saying, "Oh, what are you up to?" Or if we're working on the same thing, or we listen to this and just hanging out or getting dinner together. How, or, how'd you make that sound? Can you give, give me that? What is that plugin? Give you know, you you tweak yeah. something. Give it, send it over to my room. You know, I think such an important thing too, and I'm. This is I'm not at all comparing um, Dom or I, maybe Dom, but less me to the Beatles. But I'm in, I'm halfway through this whole get back thing. Yeah, yeah. And it's um, you know, the amount of kind of fucking around and 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 bantering and kind of making things up and joking around and keeping it light for for and but but little gems come out of that and that's mm. kind of part of the creative process. And I think Dom and I sent, uh, share a lot of the same. Um, kind of wit sensibility if and, and dry humor sensibility to have someone that kind of sees eye to eye when you know when when it is three o'clock in the morning and you've got a playback at 10 and you still have two minutes of music to write you you need to have some sort of levity in the conversation and i think having someone that sees eye to eye with you to kind of you know slam off each other is is a good thing and and you know i think a lot of our friendship is based on that kind of um 
humor and wit and keeping it light and having a good time and not taking ourselves all too seriously yeah totally i mean we would you know when we should have been writing cues we (laughs) were like making up ridiculously stupid songs you know doing and with with jack donman who often was the (coughs) editor on those projects and was on this movie the king's man you know doing three-part harmony things with you know crazy inappropriate lyrics and just just having fun and just being stupid which kind of to, you know, it made the crazy crunch lines and and not sleeping bearable because we would you'd just get lost in in having fun and the, you know the the light and the shade of it all. So yeah, absolutely. Which so... was then we we recreated on this film. It was mm, sort of yeah. like going back in time. Um, you know, we both got we weren't together for the beginning of it, but you know we were put in some rooms in um the, the, where were we? What was the editing house we were in? What country remember. were we in? Not Delane Lee. We were in London. We were in London. We got um, shipped over to London, and we were. Was it? Is it Delane Lee? No. Uh, no, Delane Lee's on the adjacent street. I'm not, sure what what the, the... I'm not sure what the building is. Yeah. yeah the uh, little yellow tags. What was the name of the place? No. Couldn't, couldn't oh, well. tell you. We might remember <laughs> it later. But anyway, we had like we were we had a wall joining our rooms, and it felt like you know with Jack in the middle of us, and it, it felt like old times, just kind of. If we were bored, we'd go and hang out with the other with the other person, or if we wanted yeah. to share some ideas or whatever it was, it was, or not, or just go to the pub and forget it and have a yeah. pint and come back tomorrow. It's funny it, that it was it was a lot of fun. That that yeah. that and, and, and I think because of our our kind of previous tenure together, we didn't have to figure each other out. We kind of right mm. off the bat knew that the <clears throat> the kind of symmetry and the ecology was going to be fine through the process and it wasn't like um what does his music sound like what does mine sound like what is his personality are there going to be egos floating around and that we, there was there was none of that we just kind of flew over and, and did this thing as a unit which was kind of nice yeah and that dom ego floats high sometimes you gotta knock it back no we widened the door so so his head could <laughs> through into his... the hat i thought that was for fit. my hat <laughs> oh, now, now i'm that's finding what, out that's what we what told you <laughs> So, uh, Matt, talk about, let's talk about the Kingsman franchise and, you know, I love these films and I'm, I can't wait for the new one. And, um, and it's, you know, I'm sure you guys can't wait for it to be out because it's been delayed and pushed so far, but, um, Matt, since you've been there from the beginning, I know Dom, you worked on the first one a little bit, what has been the evolution musically of this franchise yeah, from the first one to the second one? And now as we're entering the third one, what is the kind of the evolution of these scores? Um, to keep it brief, I think the bullet points are the the first one. We kind of had this. Uh, it's it's not a generic score by any means, but the, it's a it's a kind of it's an orchestral hybrid yeah. score. There's 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 not too many really interesting eclectic elements of it, but we I think harmonically and and theme wise, we kind of established some really kind of solid. Um, you know things to, like like a world we establish a solid world we establish this harmonic language and in the second one we were able to kind of inject this western uh country quote unquote country roads in influence yeah. to this and and but still use that same harmonic dna use the same kind of hybrid language that we we're using and now we're inviting some guitars and some dobros and some harmonica and some fiddle players into the band and um you know then for the third one uh, I think because of the because of the setting and because of the time period, we were kind of I think from the outpost it was pretty obvious that we wanted the score to be a bit more serious and a bit more. Mm-hmm. We left all the uh, electronics and guitars and basses and you know hybridy sounds. We just left them at the at the side of the road, and while still maintaining a bit of that harmonic DNA, and you know theme strands of theme that are weaved in from the first couple of movies but this one's just a much more serious organic orchestral kind of almost throwback um i don't want to say 80s or 90s is it fair to say 80s or 90s like it's just it's a it's a more of a nostalgic serious score yeah yeah Yeah, it's a it's a it's a strictly despite maybe one or two moments in the score which have to do with specific scenes it's a it's a pretty disciplined organic and and symphonic score that's did you feel did you guys feel like the ability to kind of Maybe I almost have a clean slate because this is a disconnected timeline. It's going kind of back and not really connected to those. Was it kind of fresh to be able to just kind of like, hey, let's start and do something kind of new? Yeah, I think so. I think with with the addition of me coming in, it was, it, you know, it, it kind of just naturally went there. Um, 
because we we could have done this we could have done the hybrid thing it would have worked you know a matthew Vaughan film will always work with guitars and synths and stuff and loads of people are doing those period things with the cool scores in the background but it was just like we don't want to do that we want to we want to really kind of you know get back to get back to the original stuff and and have fun with with just the orchestra for a change and not rely on all the tricks and all the noises and the cool things to kind of sell any stuff and just really get down to great harmony great melody great orchestration and 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 sell it with that right because it's been a while since either of us either of us have done that yeah yeah so. i mean yeah doesn't the opportunity if you get it to, to to do it and just go have fun with it yeah absolutely right yeah. especially when matthew's asking for it you know, when yeah. Mr. Vaughan's and... asking for something that's a throwback, you know, and, you know, he's not going, what's that noise when he hears an oboe? I mean, that's like, that was music to our ears, pardon the pun. <laughs> so it was, it was great to be able to do that. Yeah. And and because of the nature of a prequel and a whole entire, I mean, the, the, the movie predates the first movie by a hundred years or right. thereabouts. And so there's an opportunity to there. I think, you know, the original kind of Kingsman, um, before we even started working, the idea was the original Kingsman theme we would play over the logo at the beginning, and then you mm -hmm. wouldn't hear it again. And then we're 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 in completely new territory. Yeah. Um, and so to there the are end, basically. yeah, little little strands of DNA for specific moments might be around, but you really don't get the full on Kingsman the Secret Service musical package until the last scene. Right. So when you guys sat down for this at the beginning and you first had your conversations with, with Matthew Vaughn and you kind of had a game plan, what take me through like the planning of, of co-composing with somebody else. Like how do you divide and conquer? Uh, do you create a game plan? Do you just uh, kind of go fool around and see what comes together and then make a game plan like separately? Like what's kind of the your your work ethic for, for this whole project? It was kind of um, all over the place is, is not really the right way to sum it up but it was it kind of in stages so matt matt and matthew matt and matthew born um <laughs> matt sat down with matthew very early on bef even before i was involved and they started kind of hashing out ideas for the main theme and then when i was brought on we sort of expanded on that and we were flown over to matthew's house and we sat at the piano and we really kind of hashed out the main uh theme is that fair to say, Matt? Like the Definitely. A and the B part. By the time we left Matthew's house, it, we pretty much knew what it was. And then um, Matt was working on Rocket Man, um, so I got flown over to London and was just kind of coming up with ideas, but constantly, you know, throwing them over to Matt and 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 vice versa. And then we had a brief time in LA where we came up with some Rasputin ideas together. Um, so. You know the the thematic material was conceived together and then i was because matt was on rocket man i was kind of putting that into sweet versions of things um and then when matt had finished rocket man we sort of we just sort of got going on everything um first time around um, yeah that was right about when we when we started working to picture right right when i was finished yeah. with that film i'd done a like... few scenes yeah um yeah uh with I think we had by the end of it we had like three bad guy themes um right. and so i did i'd had some stuff with the with the first bad guy theme we'd come up with um which eventually the arc of the character changed so then that all had to get changed um so it was just yeah it was uh and in terms of divide and conquering it was just you know we just do exactly that you want to take that one i'll take that one you want to take that one and then as the process kind of unfolded you know we sort of had this unwritten rule that once you'd done it like four times and it hadn't gone <laughs> approved you throw it over to the other person and yeah. they take care of it so um but all the time especially as i mentioned earlier we were we were next to each other for a lot of it it was it was always like hey i finished this cue come and have a listen to it yeah and you know or what do you think and you know we know each other's style and and work so well that it was always like super constructive it was there was never any ego it was always we were both trying to get the very best music in the movie possible right yep. and, you know and having so. someone that you 
trust their sensibility and their taste and their experience to come in and for me to say, hey, Dom, take a listen. You know, how, am I wrong in ending this scene mm-hmm. this way? Mm-hmm. And having someone go, no, that's what I would have done. Or why don't we try this? You know, it's like you, if you can, if you can uh, kind of put your ego to the left for a second and say, okay, maybe they're right. It's, 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 it's wonderful to have a, a filter before it hits Matthew's ears, you yeah. know? And also what's really super cool is that, you know, you know, when we've worked for other composers in the wings, I'm sure Matt will agree with this. We tend to get put into a box, mm-hmm. you know, Matt does this stuff and Dom does this stuff. And so right. we were very conscious in this one to be like, let's almost flip it up. Let's yeah, flip yeah. it. I'll do the stuff that you get put in a box for and you do the stuff that I get put in a box for. And I think that's why the score really took, as well as like having different themes and lots of cool different ways of doing things. I think that's why it took on a different, thing because we weren't getting put in those boxes we could do the things that challenge us and we could do the things that we don't do with our eyes shut we actually have to like really figure out how we get the best thing possible so would you agree with that matt absolutely yeah so uh, as i mentioned earlier this film was originally slated for i think november 2019 and then (laughs) and as things happen uh mergers and pandemics and everything kind of uh pushes things um did this movie stay can throughout pandemic or did it get opened back up with all the additional time and did matthew von go tinkering and things had to (laughs) be redone again (laughs) we 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 had a moment um not not too long ago where we realized i mean it was i said not too long ago about a year ago we had moved to london we had we had gone back and forth to london and la because there's families involved and moving them out and then coming back and then there's school involved um and matthew came out for a month oh matthew did come out to la for for a month or two right when we were re-editing and um and then so back and forth to london over the course of like 10 or 11 months then back to la permanently we both moved you moved bought a new house yeah i moved as well the pandemic happened and we were still working on Kingsman throughout this whole, throughout the whole entire world going into us. We were moving, mm-hmm. children were had like it was, and, and Kingsman was just this underlying drone <laughs> that was present with us through the whole entire thing. We, I mean, we started um, like in December of 2018. That's when oh. I originally went out to, to Matthews yeah, to kind I of came on in January. Up from scenes. You came in yeah. January of 19. Uh, the movie was supposed to come out in November. Things were pushed. Pandemic. Um, they were still re-editing some some things. We were still kind of figuring out the the, the motive and the direction of the baddie in the film, and so that mm-hmm. meant re- rescoring a lot of his material multiple times. Um, COVID happened. Um, orchestras were shut down. Luckily, yeah. there was Sydney an orchestra. Was yeah, there was an orchestra in in Australia that Dom had re- recorded in before, so he knew all the players out there and all the all the personnel, and and so we so. But, uh, a couple of the recording sessions were kind of capped off in Australia um, in May or June of 20, right? So the whole process for us was about I don't a year remember. And a half. Yeah. All blur. I mean, yeah, I can't put specific dates on anything, too. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure did that add, were you guys stressed at all during that? Because, I mean, just to completely have to change your workflow. I talked to, you know, I just talked to Steve Jablonski about scoring during the pandemic and like, how did that affect your workflows and how did, how quickly did it take for you guys to adapt to? what we're doing right now and being digital. And I'm, I'm sure composers are somewhat used to it because directors are out and about different areas to do these, but was it much of a change? Did it add a lot of stress? Were you guys like, shit, how are we going to do this? Like, or did it kind of all flow and kind of work out? Um, I think it was, I think it was fine. I think by the time we got to that point, it was just, you know, we got to roll with it. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we, we always just had that thing of like, don't, Let's, let's not settle because at that, that point when you're in a movie for so long the part of your brain goes let's just get this through mm. that's just because it because it gets to that point where you're like i don't i can't I, I don't have another idea for this scene and that's why it was so great there was two of us yeah that was a weekend yeah. we can switch off on that or you know get you know get the therapy we needed from the other person <laughs> um yeah and so you know we just and correct me if I'm wrong, Matt, but I think we just always were like, we can't, we put so much into this. We can't just go whatever, yeah, it, strong. Wh- whatever it is to get it through. We had to like, we had to be happy with what we were presenting to Matthew. So um, logistically, I think there was, now that I think about it, there was probably a thing, a, a big component of it made it easier because when we were, I mean, by the time we came back here in February of 20, 
we were kind of, besides besides the the main baddie expositional scene, mm -hmm. we were kind of crossing our T's and dotting our eyes on a lot of the score. Yeah, and doing that in London when Matthew might be in town in London because he lives out in the countryside, he might be coming in like on Thursday, and so you've got something to show him on Monday. It's like well, he's coming in Thursday. You're you're sitting there for four days, kind of waiting around. Whereas being back here during COVID, you're you're in your home, you're with your, and then it's like when he's ready, you click accept the Zoom, and yeah. and so there was a. There was part of it that was actually a little bit more convenient, um, in a in a kind of a localized way, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, um, you know, Matthew is a, a fantastic filmmaker, and his films are, I mean, super stylized. I mean, he knows action, he knows style, and they're just dripping with his visual kind of uh, style and language. So, I'm curious, as composers who really know his style well. Do you feel the pressure that the score really has to match like the, his visuals? And when when you see his stuff for the first time, uh, do you feel pressure that the score has to be at a certain level to make sure that they match up with those? All I mean, dating back from all the way from Kick-Ass all the way to now, I mean, his his movies, kind of, he's kind of created a kind of little auteur path for himself. And I'm just curious as composers, how do you bring it to make sure that the, the music is is supporting those visuals? Well, I mean, a lot of the times that. when a lot of the times when we're working, when we're actually starting to write to these scenes, the visuals are are nowhere near being realized. So a lot of mm. the times we're working to animatics or even kind of animations of characters right. um, with their kind of face glued on until it's until it's fully realized. Um, and you know, Matthew knows what he wants. There there are certain things I remember on. Oh, I don't remember what movie it was, but there was one film we were doing where there was a massive. It wasn't this one. It was maybe one of the first Kingsman or Kickass or something, Kickass or something, where there was an explosion and kind of built the music, built the music, and then came came out and left a, a hole for the explosion because there's no way the orchestra is going to compete with the nuclear bomb. And, <laughs> and Matthew's like, "Why did you, why did you stop there and, and explain this to him?" And he's like, "I don't know. If I want." if I want the music to be louder, the music will be louder. Um, so he knows what he wants. And so, and, you know, I think both Dom and I at this point have worked with him enough to have those conversations where if we're in the middle of a scene and want to talk about a visual or talk about how we're dancing with the sound effects or something, you just give him a ring and, and you can have a chat about it, you know? True. I think yeah. also that you know, there are certain tricks, there are certain chord sequences and certain kind of intervals that we know Matthew loves hmm. from his other films. And, being wary of those and not not relying them not relying on them too much with this one kind yeah. of was was great in pushing the score into a new realm and making it more of a prequel score and not kind of derivative of the first two movies right. um because at the beginning of it matt and i were like we're not doing this chord sequence we're not going to do this interval because yeah. we want it we want it to be different um and it's those moments, you know, when you can't get a cue through, you're like, do we just do, do, we just do, that? <laughs> do we just do that? And like, <clears throat> but we, we, we stuck, we stuck to our guns and we're like, no, 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 we gotta, we gotta see it through. This is the vision. So. Yeah. And I you know with, with a Matthew Vaughn film, you're going to have some great set pieces. You're going to have some fights. You're going to have, you know, and as composers, you've scored your fair share of chases and fights and death scenes and battles. So when you're approaching an action set piece, uh, how do you even start the, to, to make sure you're not, repeating yourself or try to do something new. I'm sure there's a formula to it. I mean, people expect a certain outcome and of course the good guys are usually going to win, but um, when you're creating that structure and the flow of the music for a fight scene or a chase scene or anything like that, do you, have you developed any tricks now this many years into your careers or do you have like a, a certain workflow that, you know, like I think I talked to some, uh, someone told me that they treat us like a three act structure just as itself, like a scene that has a climax and it falls. Like, is there anything that you guys do specifically for action set pieces and action music writing? Hmm. Get through it. Just get through it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, deal with the picture Matt, Matt changes. Is the king. Matt, Matt is the the king of action. Um, so uh, I think with this one, me me doing more of the action than I normally would again was, and and Matt doing kind of more of the emotional stuff than he normally would because we're getting out of those boxes. I think that was really good because, again, it gave it a slightly different feel. Um, and of course, we did our fair share of. I did my fair share of emotion, and he did his fair share of action. But it, the the um, the ratio was a lot fairer this time because mm, yeah. working working on other movies was like, okay, Matt, you're doing the action, Dom, you're doing the emotional stuff, and it's like, well, no, that's not going to be fun for either of us. So, <laughs> um, I've lost track of the question, but I think that that really helped in in the approach to the action to this film is just having 
a different perspective because Matt had has, Matt's done so much Kingsman action. Yeah. The fact that you know I was coming in and maybe doing it slightly differently again was uh, a it's helpful. A bit fresh. The, yeah. The overall outcome. Um, yeah. And I don't really I, I don't really have an approach to it. It's just sort of don't especially with the Matthew Vaughn movie and I got in trouble for it early on as being too too animation like mm, yeah um, and doing too many things on too many actions mm. um so you're making so I'd say it was a learning curve for me um <clears throat> to work with Matthew on a lot of that stuff because you do have to have this like overall arc sensibility more than you would with other directors um because he really does react strongly to it being too overly animation like sure <laughs> I got yeah. slapped on the wrist a lot of time. <laughs> I think there's there's different types of action scenes too. Like there's the action scenes that you're that the that the viewers meant to enjoy and 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 sit there and eat their popcorn and and not necessarily be on the edge of their seat in a right the third act like the um the church scene in the first Kingsman with sure. Freebird with Freebird it, you're not sitting there going oh my god is he is he going to survive this it's it's you're you're in, you're enjoying the visual and the whole yeah. Yeah. recipe of it we have one in this um in this movie the dance fight with Rasputin which um uh, we used 1812 overture is that right yeah we yeah. used the 1812 mm -hmm. overture and it's it's so it's so over the top and off the wall <laughs> that the the stakes aren't necessarily high but it's right. it's an amazing scene um and then there's the action that's of course you know at the end of the movie when all the all the stakes are at their highest and 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 to, you know to talk technically really quickly about i i think i think a pace a pace of a scene whether it's an emotional sure. scene or an action scene is the most important thing, you know, and and then um, you know, there's pace. There's the 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 keys that you're in are going to play differently for different instruments, and you know, a French horn and a trumpet are going to strain at at different notes and at different octaves, and so to kind of know where those things happen and where we want to feel the strain, and we, you know, um, I remember on one of our recording sessions. I think it was for Kingsman two. Maybe Matthew asked. He's like, "Well, have the have them go up more. Have the violins play up more." And and we said, like literally, they're on their highest note on their smallest string, Matthew. And he he threatened us with with like um, commissioning having a new violin built with higher strings on it. Um, it. It never happened, obviously. But the but those type of devices to know where where to put you know modulations and key changes and what are those big story points to kind of the obvious ones to kind yeah. of launch to another level of intensity um yeah especially with matthew sense. too like going up yeah. going up is really important yeah in action <clears throat> if you're not going up in the action not going not, up get out <laughs> it's pretty much i mean it, what it, it, you know especially when people are going down you need to be going up yeah <laughs> you know if people are falling out of the sky your music needs to be going up yeah. So um, <laughs> that was a good learning curve for me, you know. Why did you go down at the end? Yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so the yeah, trick, there, is there, tricky... there, there are definitely tricks to a Matthew Vaughn action scene. But just in it general, is, it, to get is it tricky to know like how to enter a scene and leave a scene musically? Is that, I mean, you should probably does that happen like in the spotting stage where you know when to start, when to stop, but like when a scene concludes, like do you ever feel it kind of awkward how to end the music and segue into a new scene is that ever i don't know how you guys deal with that i mean it doesn't even have to be a kingsman related but just in general as you're composing like i know i'm just curious like entering a scene musically and leaving musically is it is it, is it ever challenging or does it you, you want to step on dialogue or step on like a certain shot length or anything like i don't know how that works i think it's more challenging at, at points where the the cut doesn't know what it is yet you know a lot mm, of times yeah, we yeah. come on when we're all still figuring it out. Sure, um, yeah. Whatever the, the movie's movie is, also changing the, too, you know. Yeah. yeah, the movie's changing. The editor's trying to figure it out. The director's trying to figure it all out. And so, that for me is the most difficult to write music to because you're doing your best to smooth everything out when you know, those frames might not even be there. And that, it, right. you know, and then when the picture changes, you've got to have a completely different um, way of getting into that next scene, or it will just continue, or whatever the the fix is. But once you can kind of feel it once the edit has got to a place where you're like, okay, everything else starts to make more sense of where you're coming in and where you're coming out and where you're peaking and where you're dropping. So um, I would say for me personally, it's, it's really, it's difficult when the edit's not there. 
because you're you're really trying to kind of put a square peg in a round hole and it's 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 tough sometimes especially with previews and trying to make everything seem finished sure. when it's not yeah so, Focus group training, trainings, then conforming. Oh yeah, they're, be they're beautiful. Those things. <laughs> I bet. Um, so just looking back at the whole project, I mean, the fact that it's out now—well, not yet, but it's coming out—and people get to hear your score. Um, is there anything for each of you? Is there a, a portion, maybe a specific cue or a specific scene that you look back, you're particularly proud of, that you really enjoyed working on? Is there something that really stands out? I think that I think the. We were um, we were asked by Disney yesterday, Dom, to yeah. to to pick a piece that kind of could, that they were going to use for some promotional materials for social mm -hmm. media and everything. And going back on it and kind of scanning through the soundtrack at least, which is even which is just a fraction of the score because there's so much music, especially if you count all the unused versions of things. It's it's kind of tough, man. I think it's it's a, it really is a sum of its of its parts this one yeah. you know because it, and 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 linearly you do go on you know the kind of very stylized hyperactive comical at, over the top action of this movie like and even that kind of whole out you know genre of film that Matthew does so well you don't you don't really quite get there with both feet until the third act mm -hmm. right and so the the score it's it also just goes on this journey where it's really quite serious at the at for the first i'd say at least half of it you know um there's a there's some winks here and there at the beginning and there's some seriousness at the end but it it, it really evolves um to pick one piece i don't know i could talk more about dom's pieces than i could have my own i'm sure he <laughs> could as well but I don't know. Right, pick it, pick each other's favorite pieces then. What's your favorite I, piece? Well, I, think, I mean, just to, just to add on to that before we start picking favorite pieces, I think <laughs> Matt's completely right. I, me I remember when we were putting the soundtrack together, because obviously, as you said, there was so much stuff on the floor that we had to figure out like, what are we going to use? Are we going to use stuff that's not in the movie on the soundtrack because we love it? Um, but I remember we finished it and we were sort of, we'd gone through the mastering process and I was just going on walks listening to it and I called him and I was like, dude, this is, this is really good. <laughs> like, uh, I don't normally, I wouldn't say that about, you know, anything that I'd done by myself. Cause you don't, you don't have that sort of, hopefully you're not arrogant enough to do that. But, um, you know, I phoned him up and I was like, I really think we've got something awesome here, dude. Despite what the film does, it doesn't matter what the film does. I think sure. when people listen to the score, I personally think it's one of, if not the best thing I've been a part of musically. So, um, and I think that was inevitable because you've got, you got another heavy hitter with you. That's just, you, everything's going to go that one step up because we were both trying to get it to the best it could be. Um, and I really genuinely believe with, you know, no bullshit with promotion or whatever. I really genuinely believe it's, it's one of the best things I've been a part of. So. Awesome. Um, I know you guys do such amazing work and to see you guys finally team up. I know you guys have been talking about it and, and uh, it's so exciting that you guys got to do it and that finally the world gets to see it after so many years. And um, yeah, I'm sure it's uh, it'll be good to, it's always nice to see it in the rear view mirror as you kind of move forward and, and work on other projects and see it yeah. kind of have a life of its own. You've um, heard the score, right? I've heard the stuff they put on uh, the For Your Consideration website. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Is, that, right. Ooh, is, that, the, is that the kind of chopped up version or or is that the do you have I, full pieces there it's whatever disney put up <laughs> to okay. try to they changed it so it started with the soundtrack and then they they changed it to the pieces from the film because i think it has to be the consideration one has to be yeah, right. in the film so they changed it so it's not i don't think it's the the sparkly album version <laughs> both the the album edit but um but i'm excited to see it in I'm gonna. I definitely want to go see it in theaters and see it on a big screen and see it in all the surround sound glory, and not yeah, on. Too. I'm not gonna and listen on these little things and not, not on your iPhone. <laughs> yeah, on my iPhone. I'm just gonna watch it on my iPhone after years of your guys' work. <laughs> yeah, two so, years. I'm, I'll text you photos of me watching it. <laughs> Say nice job. So before you wrap up, I kind of want to do something a little fun. Um, you guys are friends. You've known each other for many years, and I, I thought we could play a little newlywed slash co-composer game and see how much of you of each other you guys really know like oh, fun Jesus. stuff oh my god <laughs> so okay. i'm gonna ask a question hold to on each... I, have to, I have to open spotify give me one second <laughs> <laughs> i've got to open gonna... wikipedia this is personal i don't know stuff. anything this, about this, him this is not a, their project i was gonna be like all right which one of these projects did he not work on but no. oh okay okay, okay. 
<laughs> this is like, I don't have to recognize the tune no. from Peter Rabbit, the sequel. No, 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 no. no. Okay. <laughs> I don't recognize that. <laughs> um, this is just going to be fun stuff with you guys just working with each other. I'm going to ask the one, one question to somebody and then the next question to somebody and then the other person will have to reveal if they got it right. So I'm going to start with Matt. Oh, shit. Okay. Matt, what is Dom's favorite alcoholic drink of choice? Ooh. Um, Chateau Neuf du Pape. <laughs> French, French, re- French, red, French red wine. <laughs> is that correct, Dom? Yeah, I mean, it's di- red and alcoholic is fine. It doesn't necessarily have to be French, <laughs> but yeah, red wine is my favorite alcoholic. Okay, drink. all right. Now, Dom, same question. What is Matt's favorite alcoholic drink of choice? <sighs> oh, you, should, you should know this. <clears throat> I feel like it's whiskey. But a bottle of that Statesman back there somewhere? <laughs> Bourbon? I do have a bottle of Statesman. I have mine downstairs. too still. Yeah. yeah, I still have that. I've they always make bought it. him whiskey, but I don't know if that's his favorite. You want to, so. narrow, down, you want to narrow down to a uh, varietal of whiskey? Or a type <laughs> of whiskey? Well, you mean like scotch or bourbon? There you are. I would go with scotch, but... I don't know. I, that's ding, this. Ding ding! You are correct. Ding ding! There you go. Yeah, there we Boom. go. And I'm a Scotchman too. So, <laughs> all right. Next question, uh, Matt. What is Dom's favorite food, or genre of food, or, or type um, of food from different country or whatever? <laughs> it doesn't have to be specific. But if he had the option to order something that that he really loved, what would he order? That he that he loves, I would. say say um let me think here he's not a big carb carbivore so but i will say that recently i am i will say that dom does enjoy a good uh rajdut curry whenever whenever we're in london town see that's a really good shout yeah because i do because but it's it's a bit unfair though because you can't get proper proper indian food in Los no Angeles. and i if I, I don't order indian food in the u.s i just don't do it because it's right. not good enough so, so i would say you get another guess <laughs> oh um because in england uh, it would be but right i don't live there anymore so but here uh, you man, get a second serve on this one <laughs> uh, uh, oh 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 uh meat just steak just pe- pe- meat pecania <laughs> pecania pecania on the green egg is is my final answer. Kanye on the green egg. Is that correct, it's, Dom? It's number two to something uh, I can't really eat because I, I am wheat intolerant, but I adore p- pizza. is my favorite food. Oh, pizza. Okay. There you go. Pizza. Fair enough. Pizza right, with Kanye on it. So that, for Matt, yeah. what is Matt's favorite food, Dom? I don't know. I would I would go with the meat shout as well, but... Meat shout? Meat yeah, snacks? that's... Yeah, the meat... Like a yeah. smoked brisket or something. Like yeah, a, like a, something we could cook with fire. Yeah, barbecue, good, good barbecue. Yeah, yeah. good smoked I miss, tri-tip. I miss Handy Market Barbecue, man, in the valley. If you guys haven't tried that, go on oh, Saturdays. I don't know that. Saturdays on um, Magnolia Handy Market, they shut down the, the the whole parking lot and they just do barbecues from like till six p.m. Highly recommend it. You can get like turkey legs, uh, beef ribs, barbecue ribs, uh, brisket. Okay and stock up and they make their homemade barbecue sauce so i recommend that if you guys want to it's a long way to go but yeah (laughs) i'm just saying i missed my burbank all right that's where i was that was my little (laughs) yeah well as matt was saying i just got a green egg so i i'm well matt has a smoker as well so i've just been i've been cooking so much barbecue hence the growth that's why i fill up more of the zoom screen from the last time we we were interviewing Okay, so here's uh, we got like uh, two more. Uh, what is? I'm gonna start with you, Dom. What is Matt's biggest pet peeve? What annoys him the most? I mean, I can go from what. <laughs> I think, from my experience. Notes from Matthew Vaughn. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. But it is music related. I would say when someone, um, refers to a cue as being classy. Uh, I know that drives him mad. Um, but other than that, he's, I don't know. Cause he's so, 
easy going. I, so I, easy he, going. I I don't think I've ever heard him raise his voice. So uh, I, <laughs> I would say that, and that's you know, I would say when someone says that something needs to be more classy. Is that it, Matt? Uh, uh, I guess that's up there. What was the question? My biggest pet peeve. Yeah, biggest pet yeah. peeve. What what really yeah, grinds your gears? Oh, I don't know. Stupid people. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Common sense. Filling up okay. my gas. Filling up my gas tank. All right. <laughs> you're you're okay. wasting money. You're not on a Tesla and... yet? Come on. <laughs> no, <laughs> like Kingsman money to yet. get you a Tesla yet? <laughs> no. no. Trucks. I need my truck. <laughs> That's right. Jersey boy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So what is Dom's biggest pet peeve, Matt? What irks Mr. Dominic Lewis the most? Who? <laughs> um... He's like, there's so many things. I know. Saying, my... but... <laughs> he complains so much. He's always complaining. God. I don't know uh, what the top one me is. Mediocre musicals. <laughs> mediocre musicals? Oh, that's up there. That is defi that's definitely Some up there. Subpar musicals. Yeah. Or uh, The Grateful Dead. How about that? <laughs> well, Fish would be <laughs> Or Fish. Grateful fish, Dead. yeah. Yeah, yeah no, ago, that's fair. Years in, ago, in our I personal dragged... relationship, that would be fair. In like day-to-day yeah. -day life, um, People uh, sleeping on uh, green arrows. Oh, yeah, not going. You know, when the lights Just, go, yeah, yeah. the green arrow, green. and no one moves. And they're still on their phone or something. Oh, my God, it drives me mad. Oh, you would hate it here, though, because here they don't even get in the intersection, Dom. They don't even get in the intersection to turn on yellow. They just wait oh, for that yellow yeah, to go, no, and that, it turns red. That so that's East Coast driving insane. for you. <laughs> that would drive me insane. Yeah. All right, uh, last one. I'm going to put you guys on the spot here. Uh, Matt, what is Dom's birthday? Oh, shit. <laughs> Don't you do it, Dom. Don't you click on it. Don't you click on he's, Wikipedia. Don't you go looking. Right now. Um, Don't you do it. I see a movie. Well, well, hold on. Let me let me think of if I've had any, if I can remember any birthday parties that I've been to of Dom's. I'm not uh, even, I mean, I'm not even close with this. <laughs> Mine's going to be a stab in the dark. Um, Dom... I'll give you Dom's... a hint. He's he's on the he's in the first half of the year. Dom is. Yeah, well, Dom is. Go, there, His birthday there goes, is. There goes my first. Um... He's not. He's not past summer. He's, he's before. Yeah, summer. no. He's no. He's yeah. He's 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 at April twenty third, baby. Oh, Dom. No. What's your birthday? January 29th. Oh, that was my uh... second guess. <laughs> and Dom, if you have not cheated already, what is uh what's Matt's birthday? I know it's in the summer. It is in the summer. It's actually my birth month as well. If you, I don't know if you remember mine. <laughs> I don't remember you. I'm sorry, mate. I don't remember. You. I don't even. I don't think I even remember my wife's birthday. That like, Matt's It's true. Birthday, so. like, I thought about this. I'm like, I don't even know my best friend's birthdays. Yeah, after after Facebook is the same. I remember my for that. friends' birthdays from really little because obviously yeah. birthdays were a big deal back sure, then. Sure, sure. But... Now that now you have technology reminding you every time, so you don't really have to remember it. <laughs> Well, it's summer. Oh, summer's so long. Three months. It's three months. <laughs> I'm going to go June. Closing in. You're closing in. Now, what day of June? Oh, I, I don't know. Like, early, like, 12th. Oh, very oh. close. That's Kaya's birthday. Is that not Kaya's birthday? No, it's not. I'm the 27th. <laughs> 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 it would have been amazing if it was. No, yeah. you got it. What was? What's your birthday, Matt? June 9th. Oh, June 9th. So close. That's pretty good. close. It was close. That's probably <laughs> when I've given him a bottle of whiskey on the 12th. <laughs> it's, and then oh, we it's late. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's April is when Matt gives me his birthday present. Yeah. Really. They're... <laughs> <laughs> so but the following right. follow, following year though, like 15 yeah, yeah. months after. Of course. It's adjusted. Yeah, it's adjusted. Right. Yeah, yeah, you got it right. You got it perfect. All right, you guys know <laughs> each other inside and out. Uh, Matt, Dom, thank you so much for taking the time to have a little fun today and then talk about your your Kingsman's work. Congratulations, by the way. It's just it's out. It's fantastic, and you know you got you know I love you guys and love your music. So it's always a pleasure to chat. <laughs> thanks, thanks Kai. It's really good to see you. Good to you see too. you, man.